tonight on Code 2 Zero. All right, we're heading to a structure fire. Twilight Zoney? I, it's a bizarre situation. to uh if we're able to accomplish that that'd be great okay um sorry we got a lot uh, we got a lot going on um we're here at the california science center and oh we are we're at the right spot it appears where they're lifting the uh they're lifting this tank up let me uh so we, we filmed the uh, the rockets being moved a while back, and now I'm trying to get us in here. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can uh, find a place to park and call. But yeah, the fuel tank is over here, and uh, they are moving. That's the fuel tank for the space shuttle and they're gonna be picking it up and putting it in position. It's supposed to happen at 1 a.m. and it's basically 1 a.m. right now. So let me make some calls and see if we can if we can get in here. So we're here at the California Science Center. We're underneath this very large DC-8. Oh my goodness. Um, we're gonna go in here and they're actually raising the, uh, the tank for the space shuttle. And we're gonna go in and uh, get some video of that because it's a pretty big deal. I remember when they flew the space shuttle over um, over LA. I actually have video of that. I think. Let me make sure the car is all set, and then we'll we'll go in and, and take a look at the. And they've got the boosters in there, which we have footage of that as well when they move the boosters down. And then we have the. Uh, and now we're getting footage of the tank. So it's kind of kind of full circle here with this whole thing. So let's go in. Let's take a look and see see what's going on. All right, so we're here at the California Science Center. This is, uh, again, I'm gonna try and condense this as much as possible. This has been going on for many, many, many years. And uh, there's a ton of information on this. Obviously, the California Science Center, Wikipedia are gonna be some definite uh, places to look for information. But basically, when the shuttle program was retired, NASA took one of the retired shuttles, uh, threw it on a 747 transport aircraft, flew it here to Los Angeles with the goal and the intent being from the beginning to donate the entire set, I guess you could say, the launch vehicle, the shuttle, everything involved in that program, uh, what you would see back in the day on television when they would launch it, all that equipment was supposed to end up here at the California Science Center. Really a, a massive um, undertaking for everyone involved in the project. We've spoken to astronauts on the subject matter, we've spoken to uh, the actual uh, director of the California Science Center. So we have a ton of information on this, but I want to start back with the actual flight of the shuttle coming in. And this was, um, I don't have the exact date, so Alex, if you could put the date up when the footage is rolling, but we do have footage of the shuttle coming over Mulholland, uh, basically into uh, the basin here. Um, the shuttle then, obviously they landed it and were transported it uh, with a huge media frenzy to the California Science Center, which is where it's been ever since.
Recently, we had our uh, adventure with the solid rocket boosters, and the solid rocket boosters were brought in on a truck, and we actually we have video of that. What's really cool is we spoke to some astronauts at the time, or one astronaut at the time, as well as the director of the California Science Center. So if you go back, Alex, let's, uh, let's go and listen in with them and uh, see what they have to say about what kind of where we were up until this point. Uh, let's hear from the astronaut and the director of the California Science Center. This is a very exciting day for you. What's going through your mind right now? Well, just really excited and uh, thrilled that we're actually getting these solid rocket motors, the last big piece of the space shuttle to arrive uh, for our permanent display in the Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center. Will it be open to the public once it's completed? No, there, we've got a long process ahead. The building is partially completed. We actually have to put in the space shuttle stack before we complete the building. It's so big that we couldn't get it into the building. So we're partially constructed. We'll, this will arrive at the Science Center later today, and then next month these solid rocket motors will go into the building. Uh, early next year, the external tank and Endeavor will go into the building, So, uh, and then we'll complete construction a couple more years before we'll, we'll get construction completed. Uh, Endeavor will only be on display in its current location in the Samuel Ocean Pavilion at the Science Center until December 31st, uh, and then it will go off exhibit for a few years. Well, it's exciting. I, I mean, I, my first flight was on the Space Shuttle Endeavor back in 2009, so it's just great to see, you know, not only Endeavor, but the whole shuttle program be honored here and be set up in the launch configuration so people will get an idea of the scale of how big that vehicle really was. So basically, that's kind of where we left off up until tonight. Tonight now, we are here at, again, at the California Science Center, actually inside uh, on the last thing where you saw the shots of the solid fuel rockets going by. That was out on the street. We're now inside. We've got this massive, massive crane behind me. It's like a 200 foot, I think it's probably about a 200 foot crane up here, massive heavy lift crane. That crane is gonna be lifting that fuel tank uh, which was the main center fuel tank for the shuttle on launch, which you would always see it between those two solid rocket boosters, which actually, funny enough, you can see behind me over my right shoulder. Um, they're already in position. The crane is gonna lift this tank up and hopefully put it in the right spot. I'm sure they will. They've, they've taken a lot of time to do this right, and it's incredible to see it here. And just the, the sheer scale and size of this whole project is amazing. But once it's done, the idea is to have the, the fuel tank, the center fuel tank, the two solid rocket boosters, and the, uh, the space shuttle attached, all assembled here behind me at the California Science Center. So a little bit of a wild, um, uh, just a crazy story of them moving all of this equipment here. Again, the solid rocket boosters, as you heard, were being restored off site. Um, for them to drive them down here was a huge endeavor, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, um, but for them to, uh, to set it up for all the Angelinos, uh, basically the whole city of Los Angeles and the county to come down here and see that is a really special thing. I remember it was a huge part of my childhood seeing the space shuttle launches. And when I was a kid, I remember you could actually hear the sonic booms when they were landing, uh, when they were coming back into atmosphere. So uh, definitely holds a, a, a really, uh, a really big place in my heart as far as uh, space exploration, obviously for the United States, but especially here on the West Coast. I mean, to see this here is absolutely incredible. So we're gonna get some shots of the tank getting lifted up. And uh, yeah, that's the brief history of <laughs> the shuttle getting moved here to the California Science Center. But uh, again, really, really awe-inspiring and I can't wait to see this thing get in the air. So we're gonna get some B-roll shots of what's going on. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look.
roll here. I am. project behind you. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm trying to think of like even where to start, but uh, just to stay focused on what's going on behind you tonight. Yes. Uh -huh. What are we looking at? What are you guys doing with it? Kind of run me through just the basics of what's happening this evening. Okay, we're mating the external tank, which is a large orange component of any space shuttle staff, to the upright solid rocket motors. They're called solid rocket boosters that you see in the background there. And what we're actually doing is assembling a major part of a space shuttle full stack. So the stack is not just the orbiter, which is the spaceship, in our case it's Endeavour, that astronauts ride in. Um, it's the equipment that gets that orbiter to the speed it needs to stay in orbit and not fall back to Earth. That's the external tank and those solid rocket boosters. They work together as the propulsion system uh, for, the, for the Endeavour. Yeah, the final goal is to assemble a near-flight ready space shuttle, all authentic parts. So the external tank that you see us lifting this evening is the only part of the shuttle system that was not reusable. The only reason we have it is because an earlier tank had a problem, and that problem led to the disintegration of one of the other orbiters at Space Shuttle Columbia. That was in 2003. Um, so the tank that we have, ET-94, was used for engineering testing, and it was never flown. That's why it was not sacrificed and did not burn up on re-entry, which is what happens to the tank. We have it, and so we were able to mount a full-stack shuttle. It's the only authentic one in the world. I was just about to ask, and that'll be my final question. Is this, yeah. the, only, is this the only example, when it's done, of course, right. of a <clears throat> shuttle pack ready to go? That's right. This will be the only example of a, a fully authentic space shuttle stack anywhere in the world in launch configuration. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it's been 33 years in the making. It's been a long time. So this is a wonderful evening. It's great to see. Uh, how yeah. long until uh, you guys think it's going to be completed, completed with the shuttle and, and everything done? Uh, the shuttle will probably, if we're lucky and the weather holds for us, and wind is always a factor, we'll be mating the um, uh, Endeavour to this waiting stack probably at the end of January. Wow. Uh, and then the shuttle will stay off display. We won't open. You see, we're still constructing the building around it. So we've got the building construction and the exhibit development going on at the same time. And so we've got about a hundred other artifacts of varying types, some quite large, that are going to take about two years to put into the building. Obviously so, well worth it at this point. I think so. Absolutely. We've been working really hard on this for a long, long time. It's, uh, it's incredible to see the whole thing come together yeah. again from seeing it fly over L.A. Oh, totally, yeah. The streets to now this. This is really yeah. definitely well worth it for right. the engineers. They just put the tank up. Um, we shot a time lapse here on the Black Magic. Um, you can see the fuel tank coming up. We were inside, we got some shots in there. Tay and I were freezing, we couldn't take it anymore. So we came back out to the car to warm up. Um, 
obviously the time-lapse shot is fantastic. We already have our interview um, with uh, Ken that was great and uh, he did a fantastic job of outlining as you guys saw what is going on today the reason why we're out here and why this is such an important part of the assembly of the entire shuttle pack is what they call it which includes again the solid rocket booster the uh, fuel tank the center orange fuel tank that we see and the uh, shuttle itself of course being inside there i have to say uh, looking at what they're building in there how it goes basically underground uh, where the base of the shuttle is going to sit with all of those components and seeing just how tall those <laughs> those solid rockets are um, it, it's absolutely incredible you can see now the the size of the crane uh, going up here well over 200 feet we've got the guys up on the uh, basket going up to inspect the fuel tank to make sure that everything is in position and where it needs to be which it it does appear to be correct everything looked very smooth and it is just hanging there uh, we looked at the time lapse and it's it's actually moving it's hard with the naked eye to see it but it is hanging there uh, again you can see <laughs> i don't know if you can see it the the a12 uh, behind me which again became the sr71 program I, I didn't know they had one here. I'm, I'm actually shocked to see that when we walked over. I was genuinely like, holy cow, because normally you see those inside and they're, they're usually pretty well protected. But uh, to see one just out there was uh, kind of amazing. It's, it's also, I don't know, it's been a, been a wild night with this stuff. But uh, again, this is where we're at at this point. Per uh, Ken's information, the final assembly of the shuttle, just to reiterate what he was saying, this is the only place you can find it right here in LA right just south of downtown is the only place that we're going to be able to see an entire shuttle pack with the fuel tank the liquid fuel tank and the solid rockets and the shuttle all assembled in launch configuration which is again just from just from what I saw standing there with just the solid fuel uh, rockets is an impressive sight to see so I'm very excited to see when this is done and again when they go to grab the shuttle and, and lower the shuttle into position we'll be out here for that as well and they're talking about doing that at the end of this month I think he said am I, am I mistaken in that no he said he said end of January right so we'll see we'll we'll get information on that but uh, yeah quite a quite a while and I didn't expect to go in there too they were like hey grab a grab a hard hat and and a safety vest and let's go I was I was shocked that was really really cool so a little bit of behind the scene access today into the construction site of what will be the final uh, the final home of the space shuttle endeavor so pretty neat a little nerdy compared to our usual stuff but I think it's I think it's pretty cool it's pretty pretty spectacular absolutely so we'll wait for the next move if they do pick it up and bring it over that's gonna be uh, incredible as well but uh, we, again, we did shoot that time lapse, so Alex, let's take a look at how that came out. I think it came out pretty good. Let's take a look at that time lapse, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be on to the next one. We just had a pursuit vehicle doing 80 miles an hour through red lights from Coldwater, heading westbound on Riverside. They're heading right toward us right now. Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get off and see where this vehicle goes. But well, it sounds like CHP just canceled. He's going to be right here, right ahead of, ahead of us here. It's a blacked out Honda Civic doing 80 plus. Ah, blew right through a red and they canceled it. The vehicle just passed there again. Uh, now it's on uh, Cool Flocks going northbound. Uh, speeds are about 60. It's not lit up. Northbound Colfax. Not lit up at 60. Probably heading up to the 170 if I had to guess. Yeah, vehicle going northbound now at 60. Vehicle not lit up. 536, where you at? I don't have Magnolia Boulevard. Uh, I'm gonna head back towards the freeway. Towards the 
Made a right on Magnolia, headed back to the freeway. Okay, I think that vehicle might be headed, trying to make its way back over to the 100. 170. Uh, you said he was northbound Colfax at like 60. Uh, just, uh, hang on. I'm trying to get the location area on the visual. Okay. He was northbound right here on Colfax. Yeah, he's he's probably making it back to the 170, if I had to guess. Oh. Mm. There's the CHP in it right here. Right here. Yeah, he just just lost him. Damn, he was flying. They were coming uh, off the one. Uh, Yeah, I'm getting on northbound right now from Camarillo or from Riverside. Same, but yeah, he just uh, he just lost him over at like Colfax. Uh, I'm getting on northbound. All right, uh, Gabe had some interesting uh, an interesting story just now. He was on a vehicle fire that LA City was dealing with. It's a uh, uh, I think it was like a U-Haul truck. He was saying um, with a gas leak and gasoline was on fire running down this oh excuse me got the hiccups from that it was a gas fire from the fuel tank in this uh u-haul style van gas tank ruptured started running down the street ended up lighting two other cars on fire it really demonstrates how dangerous gas fires are and how quickly they can spread la city fire ended up adding foam to their uh It's black, uh, first to the plate, I think he said 8J, uh, I believe. So it, it definitely demonstrates um, it definitely demonstrates what a gas fire, how quickly a gas fire can spread. And the only thing that was able to, to get it out was the foam. So they added foam into their, uh, into the water tank and uh, well, as it's spraying. And that foam helps to prevent the uh, evaporation of the gas or the liquid into a gas on gasoline and, and kind of, pro ooh. Oh, I thought that was him. <laughs> Guy was getting on fast. I was like, that might be him. Nope, not. Um, so the foam, uh, the foam helps with gasoline fires, any, any type of liquid fuel fire. Uh, we've got that footage queued up here. Alex, if you could, let's take a look at Gabriel's Pico Union box truck fire spreads to multiple vehicles. And you can see there's three, three vehicles that end up catching on fire because of that. Let's take, uh, let's take a look at the tape.
Okay, copy there. that. And what's uh they're talking about something with 28s on 17. Not sure what they got. All right, so that's a, a really incredible example of how quickly a gas fire can spread underneath other vehicles. And I mean, even down, you'll see it go down storm drains sometimes. It's really uh, pretty, pretty wild stuff. But we, we see that time and time again with vehicle fires. The second that fuel tank lets go, loses its structural integrity and starts flowing gasoline everywhere. And, and the, the really frustrating part of it is that gasoline floats on water. So you'll see the guys hosing it down and, and uh, if they're using just water, you're, you're kind of just spreading it around. So it's a very difficult situation to contend with as you can see from the tape. Um, there was that. And then we've got a weird story out of Lancaster. It's a, and I don't have all the details on this yet. I'm sure we'll have more information. Uh, later today. Um, it's up in Lancaster. It's an explosion that has led to a burned, uh, to burned human remains being located. Um, this is up, again, this is in Lancaster. And Alex, for the slug on this, it's going to be Lancaster explosion leads to burned human remains. Kind of a, kind of a bizarre story. Again, this is preliminary information. Uh, firefighters with LA County Fire responded to an explosion, a reported explosion, of course, at the intersection of Davidson Street and Avenue K in the city of Lancaster. Uh, upon deputies' arrival at the Cube Smart Storage, they discovered an outdoor fire with human remains. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office dispatched a uh, bomb squad who arrived on scene shortly after to investigate. To investigate the crime. Uh, the coroner arrived on scene to remove the body at around midnight. No further details available at this time. Kind of a mm -hmm. kind of a weird uh, it's a weird story as of right now. Just a bizarre uh, of course there's more to it. I mean human remains don't just don't just show up at a storage facility. There's obviously something nefarious going on. And and then, you know, what type of explosion, you know, what was used? Was it... You know, what were the details surrounding this? Again, this is just preliminary information. Um, we'll have, we'll definitely have more information for it by the time this comes out. And I'll include a link in the description for this story specifically, because this is a this one is probably going to evolve quite a bit between now and when this comes out. As always, I know I, I sound like a little bit of a broken record if you're here with us every Friday, but if you're new, uh, information that we get here on Code Two Zero is extremely preliminary. That information evolves as the day goes on. The first forty-eight um, stories like this evolve uh, quite a bit, so. If you do want to see the final iteration, or at least the, the vetted information that uh, we're finding on these stories, you can always go over to keynews.tv, scroll down to publication if you're on your computer, uh, tablet or computer, you can check out Roundtable, that, that works fairly well. And then if you're on your phone and you want to subscribe to uh, news alerts and other publications in your local area on your phone, you can check out the Newsbreak app. It's really fantastic. You can subscribe to Key News Network there and follow us on that uh, platform, which is a really good spot for finding news. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting, interesting story. Alex, uh, if you could again, Lancaster explosion leads to burned human remains. Uh, if you could, let's take a look. I, I haven't even seen it yet, but let's take a look at what Yad has up in Lancaster.
like I said, these stories evolve as the day goes on. That's just the preliminary information and the, the video pretty much tells the story of what we have up there, but just a, a very twilight zony. Twilight zony? I, it's a bizarre situation. Again, we'll find out quite a bit more about that by the time this comes out. And, and again, I will provide more information for you guys. Uh, oh. Copy orbiting or if he finds if he finds a story because of that I'm gonna flip. That's weird. Okay, we're gonna look into that if uh, if that pans out cool. If it doesn't, mm. but uh, cool. When we pick back up. We'll be probably heading to another call, so we'll uh, we'll fast forward to that. We're heading to a structure fire. We've got FD uh, crossing here in front of us. It's going to be uh, one. The original address was 10730 Barnett. Uh, and they have a corrected. We have a corrected location of 10830 Noble. We're going to be. We're going to be rolling up here in about 30 seconds. They're asking for additional. We've got fire venting through the roof already. It sounds like an attic fire. And we have, um, oh no, it's it's through the roof at this point. Yeah, it's through the, through the roof at this point. Rescue 75, I need you to come up, stand by, possible uh, a victim inside. Yeah, they're saying there's a... They're saying there's a possible victim inside. I'm not quite sure what LAPD is doing, but we're gonna go over here. They're looking, yeah, we got fire through the roof already. Rescue uh, seven, I need you to assist your engine company. I need you to help them uh, report with engine seven. All right, we're gonna go across. And, uh, We're gonna go across and then cross the street over here and get in. I just don't want to get blocked in because I know this is gonna get this is gonna get stupid pretty fast. Alrighty. Alrighty. I think. I think right here is going to be our best bet. Copy. Yeah, it's going through the roof. They're getting, they're trying to get water on it, and they are saying that there's a victim. So we definitely want to get over there and see what they got.
536, 455, you could open up tax 17. Let me know if I've got uh, any injuries on this. Sorry, yeah, keep it open uh, just a little bit. Uh, hold up, but uh, they don't have what we have. So we're, I think we're good on this one. Uh, but yeah, uh, just advice, let me know. Pretty heavy flames through the roof, huh? Back corner uh, room, fully involved bars on the window. You see that a lot in the valley here. And of course in downtown, south of Mulholland, all of the places that we go to, you do see that quite a bit. Uh, on a fire like this, where you have bars on the window, that can absolutely cause an issue for people being able to get out of the building. Really scary stuff, city fire. You can see how long it took them while this was burning. They basically got the fire out by the time they got the uh, gate off of the, off of the window. So security gates, security bars, whatever you want to call them, really common here in LA. And uh, that's, if this does turn into, or turn out to be, I should say, a injury or a fatal fire, that's probably going to be uh, a factor in, in that situation. Hopefully everybody made it out, but we will see once, uh, once they do primaries and secondaries, which they won't be able to do for a little bit. So we're not going to know probably for another, looking at how hot that was burning, probably another 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, but we'll find out. A couple exteriors. Oh, the uh, street signs. Street signs and. Right now, we're going to open up a couple more holes on the bottom side of the roof. Looks like we have an exterior fire. And they're conducting primary right now. All right, you ready? Let's get on out of here. Alright, City Fire just confirming now, um, we just sent it in that this, uh, this fire that we're at is in fact a, a fatality incident. LAPD is a, a strong LAPD presence here. Um, they, are, uh, they were here initially, I think they might have called it in the way that this all kind of worked out. There was smoke in the area. LA City Fire responded to a different address out on, that was on Burnett, which is a street, uh, one street to the west. Once LAFD got in the area, they did find the, the uh, structure with the fire involvement. You guys saw it when we first rolled up. Massive, just, just serious, intense uh, pressurized flame and smoke coming out of that front area. I originally thought it was a previous burn because they said it was already venting out the back. Usually when a structure is already venting, it's usually a previous burn. Obviously not in this case, unfortunately. We talked about um, briefly, I was talking about the, uh, the safety uh, windows, the bars, the safety bars that you could see on the front side, which would be the alpha side of the structure over here. 
I mentioned that briefly that, hey, this is, you know, if someone's in there, this is going to be a, a, a hard time for them to get out. Uh, sadly enough, they did their primary search. They didn't find anybody. They said everything was clear. They did a subsequent secondary uh, search to that once they got the blowers going and got the smoke out of the building. There is one deceased uh, individual in that structure. This is now a crime scene. Uh, we are already obviously in our vehicle by the time that information came out. Um, anytime you hear that, you, you think like, were there fire alarms? You know, were they sleeping? Was it are there other factors involved? Um, anytime there's a fatal fire, it's, it's a pretty, not pretty, it's a very serious situation for the fire department, the police, arson has to come out, it's a major deal, not to mention, of course, their family and surviving relatives. That's just a horrific way to go. Um, usually elderly, you see a lot of times in fatal fires just because they're not physically able or strong enough to get either out a window, even on a first floor like that, getting over a window that's chest high. If you're in your uh, 70s or 80s, that's, that's going to be near impossible uh, for most people. Again, really difficult situation. The only thing I can stress and the fire department talks about a lot is smoke alarms, smoke alarm, smoke alarm. That's the, the, the main factor in a lot of these fires. And I've talked to a lot of people who have made it out of burning buildings and they're out on the street, they're in their PJs. I go, hey, like, how did you, did you guys smell smoke? What, what was the deal? Mo more often than not, uh, they didn't even smell smoke. Uh, by the time the fire is going and everything's you know, occurring, the thing that actually woke them up and got them into gear realizing that there was a fire is that smoke alarm. Um, smoke alarm that does carbon, uh, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide uh, detection, that's really important. And then if you have a smoke alarm, of course, that detects heat and smoke, I mean, that's the main job there. Um, that'll absolutely save your life. LAFD talks about that all the time. And you know, when it comes to actually in practice here and seeing, uh, seeing how, yeah, the attic's now on fire too. <sighs> seeing how, uh, and not just from talking to people directly that I've spoken to, but but you know what the fire department says. Most of the time, you're going to hear that the smoke alarm uh, is something that is a determining factor in whether or not people make it out alive. Um, I don't know why people don't have them. Um, I'm always checking, making sure the batteries are good in ours. Maybe I'm a little paranoid because we see this all the time. But um, yeah, a situation like this, it's, uh, it's really, it's a preventable thing. It's really, really sad. And not to mention it, it's cold out right now. It's 50 degrees out, um, which for LA weather is very cold. And you know, a lot of times um, people leave candles lit. They have a heater near, uh, near a curtain or something, something flammable. And uh, once you have uh, once you have a fire that takes off, you know it, you're dead asleep. I mean, a lot of times the the smoke alone uh, will end up uh, will end up making people uh, uh, pass away basically in their sleep. So, really scary stuff uh, on commercial fires. Not not so much. We don't normally see uh, fatalities on commercial fires. We see them on uh, residential fires, of course. But uh, I think we I need to get back to the radios here, and we need to get off to another call. But um, just to sum it up. Check your fire alarms, make sure the batteries are charged, make sure they're working. If they're not, get some that are working. It could very well save your life. Um, really serious stuff out here. So we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, Alex, uh, no other, actually, no, we do have a couple other stories. We had a weird, uh, we had a weird story out of El Mirage this morning. Not a lot of information. I kind of want to touch on it though, just because we covered it. We have five people dead in El Mirage. We have no details. The uh, police or sheriff out there, whoever it is, I assume it's the sheriff because it's way out in, in the county. Uh, they are not confirming any details on it. It's like out in the desert, but we have five people dead out there. Really terrifying stuff. I want to show some beautiful footage that um, Gabe shot earlier on a crash. Uh, Simi Valley, one critically, critically injured in extrication crash. Uh, Alex, if you want to key that up, let's take a look at Gabe's uh, footage. He had a, it was an extrication crash, looks like just a two vehicle. Yeah, two vehicle uh, traffic collision, one person trapped over in Simi. Gabe, as always, does an amazing job. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at that, and then after that, we'll be on to the next one.
knockdown. <sighs> 499, they just called a knockdown. It's a small uh, room on the first floor. I'll continue through because I'm just getting off the freeway. If they have uh, any injuries, um, I'll check it out. But it's uh, it sounds like just a small small room on the first floor. All right, we're heading into uh, into Verdugo here on a multi multi unit. Uh, it sounds like an apartment complex. This is going to be. This is going to be. Uh, what do you say? You don't see no floor. Copy that. Just stand by for a second. Sounds like we got a knockdown. If we have any other needs right now. All right, we're going uh, to be rolling up here in a second, but it yeah, sounds... Yeah, ladder to the roof, we're also assuming Rick responsibilities unless you've already established them. Yeah, it sounds like they've got a good handle on it. They're saying it's a small room on the first floor. I don't even know if it's an occupied room at this point. It might just be a... Uh, could be a laundry room or something like that, but... Um, I will assign you, Rick. You can do some uh, support measures the It sounds like they're they're downgrading resources as well. Um, and it is a little misty out. You were right, Tim. We've got a little, little mist going on. Group information. You have a secondary ladder. to the Bravo Charlie Corner. Great communication with Pasadena. Verdugo Fire comms with Glendale. I think it's Glendale Fire. No, it says Pasadena here, so it's got to be Pasadena Fire. We'll see when we get there. But really, uh, really great communication. Really great communication with these guys. Which one? Talking about where the where the ladder placement is and which side of the building they're on. Really, really cool. I see from Fire Attack, I have one RA, Tesla, RA 33. Yeah, it's an apartment. I might just shoot it just because uh, because of the location. I see from Mr. 31. We don't normally do. Uh, we don't normally go to fires over here. I see engine 31. Primary is complete on Division Two. Engine 36 is going to be taking care of the secondary on Division Two. All right, primary and secondary it sounds like are handled. Question is, where do we <laughs> where do we park for this? My goodness. I guess we go up and around. Yeah, we can go around. That's Yeah, they're getting blowers, so we're kind of. Eh, it's already. Look at that old school Crown Vic. Look at the lights on that thing. My goodness. Oh my gosh. With the old halogen wigwags. How cool is that? Oh, we have a little parking lot here. You know, this worked out. This looks like it worked out pretty good. Check this out. Ventilation. Rig. All right. You want to sell that blower for you? Mm. Yeah, they've got I'm smoke. Lock out the 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 for the pursuit, and the airship is transmitting on every South Bureau frequency okay. and attack. Fantastic. Mm, there will be some pe uh, persons displaced because of uh, because it's of the fire. Gone. We no longer need red three for the to have that path. But. I don't know. Let's hang out for a second, see if there's any medical needs. Um, wow, this car here with its door left open, that must be someone that lives there. Or maybe a neighbor. It looks like a modern, renovated apartment, two-story apartment is what we have. And they got it laddered, guys up on the roof. That's all residual smoke as of right now. I don't think it's gonna displace a bunch of people. They're saying one unit on the first floor. Um, there's some people hugging over there, and it sounds like everybody made it out. The uh, the items can be replaced. People cannot. That's always uh, it's always good to see when they get out.
especially after last night's insanity with the with that fatal fire that one was interesting too because i found that the roommate made it out and uh there were two roommates one of them made it out and the other one didn't secondary search complete that means everybody's out they're going to be firing up the uh they're going to fire up the blowers and get all the smoke out and at that point they'll do their final sweep but we made it over here pretty quick, but with one one small unit with involved with fire, they're going to get it out so quickly. There's no, there's not a lot, um, not a lot we can do coming out of uh, coming out of downtown. That's uh, <laughs> the cop is stuck underneath the, where all the fire trucks came in. I don't know if he'll be able to get out. Uh, it's so weird uh, with other agencies. I'm sure elsewhere around the world and uh, even other cities here in California uh, PD normally shows up they're normally attached uh, on the call at time of dispatch but for LA City Fire when you work downtown in the San Fernando Valley it's really uncommon to see cops at fires we we had them last night we had them at the fire last night but normally you don't see police at fires it's it's really uh it's really a rare occurrence unless they're requested for like there's an arson suspect there or uh people there are starting to get in the way and fight with the fire department then they'll call the police but normally normally you will not see uh you will not see fire uh sorry police at a fire um but most of the time again when we go to smaller agencies here in pasadena you do see police showing up at fires which is interesting because they don't really do anything they block off the street and stop traffic but at least city fire seems to get by just fine without without it and uh they have less uh less police resources to pull for stuff like this and and city sends so much equipment they usually they handle it pretty well all right uh we'll let this one go they're coming off the roof already it looks like they've checked everything they're firing up the blowers i can hear them i can hear the blowers running um we'll be out of here and on to the next one From the Ventura, guys, for this backup. Uh, coming down the road, Canyon, to the Ventura. From the Ice Code 6, got a male, uh, male in the driver's seat with a firearm. Code 6 on Ventura. Come out and around.
code for in custody? Yeah, they asked for a backup uh, for a man with a gun in the car here at the Chase Bank. Anytime you hear a backup for a man with a gun at a bank, the assumption there is, hey, why is there a guy with a gun at the bank? He uh, he complied, and it looks like they're they got him. They're picking him up. Code for in custody. And that's gonna be it from the uh, Chase Bank here in North Hollywood. We'll be out, on to the next one. All right, Alex, don't come back to me. Go uh, after that, just go to the next uh, next scene. I gotta deal with the radios and figure out what's going on. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you as always. Thank you, thank you.